Hello friends, so today we are back with another topic and today we are going to talk about vitamin D because uh, when I posted my last video on vitamin B12 there were also many questions regarding vitamin D and I know it's a very important aspect to discuss. So today we'll focus on what are the normal values of vitamin D, what are the functions of vitamin D and then uh, how do we get the vitamin D naturally and by fortified foods and then you know how to diagnose the deficiency and how to treat them. So first is what is you know the normal value of vitamin D. So two uh, kinds of uh, values are used. One is in nanograms per ml and nanomoles. So in nanograms is the most commonly what we see in India and the values you'll see is in usually in double digits like 10, 15, 20 like that. So the values roughly anything less than 30 is supposed to be deficient but symptoms usually occur only if it is less than 20. So 20 to 30 is like buffer zone and most normal healthy people should have a value of more than 30 and generally more than 50 becomes on the higher side but for the toxicity to start the value should be more than 150 that is in nanograms per ml and to get it in nanomoles per ml just multiply this nanogram value by two and a half times that will give you nanomoles per liter and it's a simple blood test available in almost all the labs so that is how we diagnose because clinically we cannot diagnose unless we see the blood report we don't know whether vitamin D is normal or not so annually whenever you have a health checkup at that time you can get your vitamin D tested and there is no need to test it more frequently the second thing is that you know don't start taking vitamin D supplements uh, just like we take vitamin B12 or other vitamin C because those vitamins are water soluble and if our body doesn't need most of it comes out in the urine but vitamin D is fat soluble so any excess can get stored in the liver and also sometimes brain and cause toxicity and adverse effects on the body. So never take vitamin D tablets you know, without doctor's prescription on your own or mostly without checking your blood levels. Then the question comes so how do we get the vitamin D for our daily requirement. So there are two main methods first is of course the natural sunlight which we are lucky in our country we have excess and plenty of sunlight in almost all the seasons. So what is required? How do we get it from the sunlight? So we need to expose our skin to the sun because the sun rays have to fall on the skin and then the skin can synthesize the vitamin D. So for that first thing is the our skin should be exposed. So generally you know most of us in our clothing the face and the hands only are exposed. So that leaves only about 5% of the skin surface area to be exposed to sunlight. So best is if possible you know in your balcony or any place where you can have a sleeveless shirt and a shorts so greater part of the skin is exposed that is the first thing and then preferably without applying sunscreen because sunscreen may hamper the absorption of uh, sunlight into the skin so even though studies have shown not in a great manner but some you know decrease in the sun, uh, white protein synthesis can happen if you apply sunscreen so lesser amount of clothes without sunscreen and the duration is also not much. If you expose your skin to uh, sunlight for about say 15 or 25 minutes and that too you don't need to do it on daily basis even alternate days or even as little as twice a week is also sufficient. So which means only about say 30 to 40 minutes of sunlight exposure spread over two or three days in a week uh, should be sufficient. Only those who are uh, you know very uh, dark skinned the problem may be there in absorption and also sometimes in older people the problem in absorption may be there but barring those two situations uh, it is enough to expose the sun, uh, skin for about 15 to 25 minutes two or three days in a week and then the preferred timing is thought to be between say 11 to 2 or at least between 10 to 4 and that is when the synthesis is maximum but if you are not able to get time at that time or if you feel that it is too hot then of course you can choose other times also like say mornings or evenings that time also some amount of vitamin D synthesis can occur. So that is about sunlight and the risk of say getting skin cancer due to ex extra UV exposure in real studies this small amount of exposure is does not increase the risk of skin cancer or other skin diseases so it is totally safe. Then from the sec second method is by the food sources. So many fortified foods are there but before that you know if you are able to get fatty fish such as salmon or also the fish liver oil so they have good amounts of vitamin D even in the egg yolk and the cheese one can have small amounts of vitamin D and nowadays many foods are fortified so if you look at any most dairy products 
they have any cereals so many of the foods if you read the label you can find that the vitamin d is there in that so some amount of vitamin d also comes from the fortified foods then coming to the tablets you know daily requirement of vitamin d is about 600 to 1000 international units for most adults so above age of 1 year and up to 70 uh, this uh, amount of vitamin d is enough so if you are taking uh, tablets of course with the doctor's prescription and it is containing say less than 1000 international units per day it is generally safe but only if you take higher amounts of that say typically more than 1500 units per day or many times it is given in the form of injections so that can lead to toxicity and toxicity one of the earliest symptoms can be nausea vomiting feeling tired muscle pains dehydration and also it can lead to increased calcium so kidney stones formation if the vitamin D levels in the blood is very high say more than 150 then people can uh, become comatose unconscious and can have seizures also so which i have seen like i see almost one or two such patients per year and that is mainly because of overuse like some doctors will prescribe you 60,000 units if it is deficiency to be taken weekly but instead of weekly by mistake some people start taking on daily basis and they do it for several weeks that is one method or if, if, they are, if someone is taking injections and then it is conduit for several days so those two situations so vitamin D toxicity is not very common severe toxicity but my toxicity can happen if someone takes you know high doses on a regular basis but with the exposure to sunlight or by consuming fortified foods with vitamin D, toxicity doesn't occur. So what are the main functions? Why do we need vitamin D? So it is mainly for the bone. Uh, our bones need uh, calcium and also vitamin D bone growth and also for the health of the teeth. So these two are the main functions and also for the muscle growth and you know these kind of functions. It has been implicated that uh, it also helps in increasing our immunity, reduces inflammation, the lesser risk of cancer, lesser risk of uh, heart attacks and lesser risk of diabetes but those have not been definitely proven or even it has been given for uh, multiple sclerosis patients but if there is a deficiency definitely one should treat but those who have normal levels of vitamin D then possibly you know these diseases will not get altered by taking vitamin D supplements. So I think uh, we have covered uh, most of the important aspects of vitamin D and uh, and also that uh, how much of sunlight exposure is required what are the fortified foods when to take vitamin D tablets when not to take so these are some of the important things to keep in mind and hope you learned something if you have any questions or queries comments please post it please like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for watching more videos in the future thank you